If you're starting for the MCAT, then Anki is probably a part of your daily routine, and there are just tons of decks out there. But the real question is, which one do you choose? Because they're also time consuming. You really need to pick one and do it right. My name is John Phillips. I'm a fourth year medical student. Before medical school, I spent a couple of years working for some of the national MCAT prep companies, and I came back and started this YouTube channel, the Associated Business, with myself and the other tutor on this channel. Her name is Maggie and she's my little sister. We make these videos because we hope that all you need is our free stuff to do well in the MCAT. But if you're like me, you need a little bit of extra help that you look to us to be that help. I've used Anki for a ton of tests and done well on all of them. So in this video, I am tearing up all of the probably most common Anki MCAT decks. I'll tell you why I like them and we will see if they are S tier or if they are F tier. Maybe somewhere in between. First up is a deck I've actually made a YouTube video on. It's called the Rebop Bebop deck. So it's a lot of fun to say, but it's not that much fun to use. So the Rebop Bebop deck is actually based off of all the Kaplan books. That's why I made a video about it. The pros are that it covers a ton of material. And you know that it's trusted material because it's a essentially copy and pasted from the Kaplan books, and those are really good books. The cons are that it covers a lot of material, and it's gonna lean you towards this trap that a lot of people fall into with Anki of using it just to feel accomplished and check something off the list, juxtaposed to actually using it with a purpose, which should be memorizing details, right? That's all you need it for. You gotta understand concepts, but then you gotta memorize details. So for that reason, I would say the Rebop Bebop deck is in the B tier. It's useful for the right student, it's not bad, but there are better options. Next up is a more popular one. It's called the Jack Sparrow deck. So this got a lot of its content from the Kaplan books as well, except for the Psych Soch. It pulled from Cubine's Anki deck, which essentially took like the 300 page Khan Academy Psych Soch document and made it into an Anki deck. The Jack Sparrow deck that is adds in a couple of things from like full length exams, double MCs and stuff like that. So the pros is that I, I like the structure of it a little bit better than the uh, Rebot Bebop for how they approach the Kaplan books. It's, it's a bit more user friendly, which is kind of tough to do on Anki if you've used it, you know what I'm talking about. It also is incredibly thorough, like much more so thorough than many of the others that I'm going to discuss. Some people have complaints that they feel like it's a bit raw because it's like a ton of copy and paste from the books and things like that, but I'm not the biggest hater of that. I kind of like it. Now the biggest drawback to this is that it is very slow and content heavy. I've got to put it in the A tier because I think that it covers everything that you need, but it's not S because it is just too much of a slug and a grind. It's not quite as user friendly as I would love as some of the others. So it's like, I don't know, A minus, B plus. We'll, we'll stick it in the A just because we're positive on this channel. Deck number four is the Cubine deck, and it's another common one for people that are just trying to bump their psych soch. I talked about it already. It's a 300 page Khan Academy document put into Anki cards. It's really good for that. If it were that streamlined and good for all the sections, it might be an S tier, but it's pretty much just for Psych Soch. So that belongs in the B tier because it doesn't cover enough, right? You have to use other Anki decks. And I think that if you're using Anki, then you should just get everything from one source. The next one is the Anking MCAT deck. And this was probably the newest out of all of them. If you don't know who Anking is, it's like a, it started off as a YouTuber. He's a dermatology resident now, I believe. And he made a lot of decks for medical school, decks that I used actually in medical school. And then he branched out to the MCAT once he started you know, making a lot of money off of this and was able to hire some help and stuff. So this deck includes the Mile Down deck, which we'll talk about. It includes something called Brosencephalon, I think. Um, but what I really like about this deck is that it is tagged up, meaning you can really, really get into the nitty gritty of what you want to actually test yourself on. And I think that's super important for Anki because the the fewer Anki cards you can unsuspend, the more likely that it is you're gonna be able to get up on a Saturday morning and do those before you go to brunch or whatever it is you youngins do these days, right? The pros, it covers everything. It's got a very clean tagging system. It is, it's pretty modular, so you can kind of like turn on and off what you do and don't want a little bit more efficiently than some of the others. And then like the slept on pro and on King is that it's got a huge online community that supports it. He has products and stuff that he sells that make this a little bit more compatible to where they're like constantly updating it and stuff. But if you just want to download the on King deck, it's gonna be solid. Only con is that it's pretty big, but it's only big because it has multiple decks 
like the mile down and all these others condensed within it. But if you are strategic about it, then the size of it doesn't really matter because it actually is organized in a fashion that you can be more strategic about it, juxtaposed to the next one I'm gonna talk about. So for all these reasons, I say the Anking deck is in an S tier. If I were studying for the MCAT, this is the one that I would use. Next up is Ortho 528. It's S tier for the name, because that's really cool. But as far as the deck itself, I'd say we're gonna put it in the B tier. I'll tell you why. It was really curated for you to hit a 528, meaning it's got everything. But it has the fundamental flaw and it's logic that knowing all the content means you're gonna make a 528. If you've studied for the MK, you know that's just not true. So essentially, if you wanna spend all of your time on Anki, the Ortho 528 is the deck for you. But if you are a person that believes in practice exams and learning outside of Anki and using Anki as a way to crystallize memorization details and things of that nature like I do, then you're probably, you're probably gonna to wanna to pass on this one. But it's still a good deck, so B tier. The next deck is the one that kind of put us on the map on YouTube, and that's the Mile Down deck. I made a video of how to use this Mile Down deck alongside Khan Academy, and it is to this day our highest viewed video, so thanks for watching that. Put in the comments if that's the video that you found us on. So it's been a go-to for years. It's based on all the Khan Academy lectures. So it gets a huge pro in the fact that even its content access is free, right? Cause like all these others, you're having to pay for either the Kaplan books or for some form or fashion to review the content before you unlock the cards. With the Mile Down deck, it's all free, right? So it gets a huge bump for that. Now it's con is that it's a little bit older. It doesn't have a community like the On King, and I just am not as in love with the Khan Academy videos as I once was because you can tell that those videos were taught with undergraduate sciences in mind juxtaposed to the MCAT, which it may be the same sciences or similar sciences, but the way they're tested is distinctly different. And if you've been studying for a little bit, you're already aware of that. But I still, I still do love this deck, and I think you can do great with it. It's a solid choice. I would put it in the A tier. Our last Anki deck is going to be making your own Anki deck. So the first company that I got hired for was really big on this. And this was actually the way that I studied the first couple times around is making your own Anki deck. I freaking hate it. <laughs> it's so time consuming, number one. Number two, you're either copy and pasting from a book, which has already freaking been done for you, or you're trying to like synthesize things. And then my brain is always really worried that I'm like, well, what if I like, and misunderstanding it when I put it on Anki card. And then I'm constantly refreshing that and beating that into my brain. It's just too much anxiety and it's too slow. Like I understand the concept that if you make your own flashcards, you'll probably remember it better, but at what cost? Because it is so time consuming to make all those cards. And yeah, if you've got six or nine months to study for the MCAT, knock yourself out, make your own cards. But most people allocate like three months to study for the MCAT, if that. And if you have less than you know six months to study for that test, you're gonna wanna be spending your time a little bit more wisely into taking practice questions, practice tests, reviewing high yield concepts, things of that nature. You don't wanna spend all of your time making Anki cards, much less the amount of time it takes for you to review those Anki cards. So is it possible to do really well on this test by making your own deck? Yeah, most of these decks that I just talked about were people's like personal decks that they then just posted online because they did well on the MCAT and people on Reddit were like thinking that that's the key to their success and it's not. So for all these reasons, I think making your deck is in the C tier. So here's the final rankings. S tier, on King, love it. A tier, we've got the Jack Sparrow deck and the Mile Down deck. B tier, we've got the Cubine deck, just the Psych Sosh one. We've got Ortho 528, just a little bit too much. We got Rebop, Bebop, fun to say, not my favorite deck. And then C tier, the only one in the C tier is making your own deck. Now it's important to say that like, all these might've worked for you and many different approaches work for many different people, but this is just my opinion on the best Anki decks. So if you are primarily using Anki as your study resource and you feel like it's falling a little bit too short, I'm gonna 
tell you that's probably true. Anki is one tool in the toolkit that you need to study well for the MCAT. It's really good to help you memorize facts, but then you're gonna kind of struggle applying it and then you're just gonna get really frustrated. So that's exactly why we made the UWorld XIFD High Yield course. We teach you the high yield content fast, give you the Anki index so that you kind of know what's up, <laughs> and then immediately test your understanding with practice questions and strategies of the nature. Links in the description if you're interested, but thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.